everyone, my name is Don. Guess where I am today? Japan today, I'm covering the biggest board game convention here in the country. Uh, it's called Game Market. Over 500 independent designers are showcasing their games. It's all happening inside. Outside, it's really cold, so I'm gonna head on in. Let's go take a look. Okay, so this was the line to get into the convention. And let me tell you, the video does not do this justice. It took a little while, but I finally found the back of the line, and once the clock struck 10 a.m., I had to walk for 27 minutes before I got to the entrance doors. Craziness! This is what it looked like inside. My advice, don't arrive 7 minutes before a convention starts. Once inside though, wow, it was pretty cool. People were selling games, people were playing games, and hundreds of independent designers were at small tables trying to sell their games. A lot of these designers are making games in their spare time and don't have the resources necessary to mass produce their games. So, they have to handle all aspects of the business from game creation, to printing the game, to the packaging of the game itself. I was hoping to interview some of these designers, but honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. After a lot of aimless wandering, a guy eventually came up to me and asked what I was doing with my video camera. This helped break the ice and landed me my first interview. So, game of market, how do you do it? Game of market, Japan, the most big and Yeah, don't let this fool you. My Japanese is awful. I've been living in this country for nine years, and I was hoping to be way better by this point. Whatever. Anyway, kudos to these guys for taking action and letting me film them. This designer is Hiloli, and the name of her game is called Amida Gyoda, or Network Torpedo, or maybe Lottery Torpedo, or Lottery Network Torpedo, or something with torpedoes. Like I said, my Japanese is terrible. Her game is a speed game where you get three cards. You flip them over and line them up in your zone as fast as you can. You then have to trace your finger along any of the lines trying to hit the monster's weak spot in your zone. The trick is, each time your finger goes past the line, you have to follow that line. If you can't make it to the monster's weak spot, you can rearrange your tiles as necessary. The first player to ring the bell will get the most gems, the second player will get a few less gems, and the third player will get even less gems. First one to 15 gems wins. After that, a whole lot more happened. But we don't have time for that today. So stay tuned until next time, and we'll be bringing you more good stuff on the game market in Tokyo, Japan. So as it turns out, guys, uh, this isn't going to be a segmented program like I had originally planned. So instead, the whole video is going to happen right here, right now. So enjoy! So there I was, walking through all the tables, when I came upon the new game from Seiji Kanai, the creator of Love Letter. Now I've always been a big fan of Seiji Kanai's games, and when I saw his new epic looking fantasy game sprawled out over a big table, I knew right away that I had to film it. I asked the guy standing near the table if I could get him to do a game explanation on video, and he says to me five words that made my brain spin. Why don't you get Seiji Kanai to do it? You might be saying to yourself, wait, that last sentence wasn't five words. Well, the guy said it in Japanese, and it generally takes less words to say things in Japanese than it does in English. Languages are weird like that. So anyway, I'm totally overdoing this thing with the music and all. Mr. Kanai, if you're watching, I hope you don't mind. 
Hello everyone. Uh, so we're here with uh, Seiji Kanai. <laughs> Uh, so, can you tell me about this game? Ah, yes, yes. This game was actually sold in Essen. A little while ago. It was called Unicorns Knights. It's called Unicorns Knights. It's a team-based game. And Ohime-sama is here. このお姫様あこれチュートリアルですごめんなさい、はいはい、チュートリアルモードなんですけどお姫様が今オートを脱出してキャピタルを脱出してこの辺境のお城に逃げたいと思っているただしその前には敵が立ちはだかっているでこのままではおそらくお姫様は逃げている間にあの倒されてしまうだろうとそこでプレイヤーは例えばエルフの王であるとか引退した老騎士まあ、士官学院の軍師みたいなキャラクターを1人担当してその危機的状態にあるお姫様を助けるで最終的にそのお姫様が目的地にたどり着くのをたどり着けばプレイヤーの勝利という感じのゲームです。And that, ladies and gentlemen, was pretty much my brief time with Seiji Kanai. Of course, the game was sold out by the time I got there, so I thanked him for his time and spent the rest of the afternoon playing games. Let me talk about this game here for a moment. The Mask of Anubis. The Dice Tower already did a review of this game a few weeks back, but I'd like to show it off just a little more. You have to look through this mask, which holds your smartphone on the inside. Your screen will give you a first-person perspective of you standing in a room. As you move your head left and right, it feels like you are actually looking around that room. It was hard to record through the mask, so instead, I just held this guy's phone in front of my camera. You can see how the technology works as I move it around the room. Imagine trying to look at this screen through this mask. It is ridiculous, but amazing. The goal of the game is to describe exactly what you see around you. At the same time, everyone else is trying to build what you are describing. So, you might say you see a hallway turning to the right in front of you with a flower on your left, and an Anubis statue on your right. You've only got one minute to do this, and when time is up, you pass the mask to the next person. The problem is, no one can see the entire room layout. When it's the next person's turn, that person will be standing in a different part of the same room. So what they describe will be from a different perspective. Hopefully, through all of these one-minute explanations, everyone will be able to piece together the entire room layout. If you're able to do so, then you'll be able to get this dog-like creature thing to the end goal. If that didn't make much sense, go watch the Dice Tower review. And just as an added bonus, the same creators will be coming out with a new game next year called The Mask of Moai. This was still in its prototype stage, but it seems the game has you actually jumping up and down. And each time you jump, you jump between an underwater level and an above ground level. That sounds awesome. Let's talk about Oink Games. Oink seems to be one of those rare board game companies that keeps putting out tiny hit after tiny hit. They just released the game Insider, which has been getting great reviews, but they've also done so many others like Kobayakawa, Deep Sea Adventure, and a fake artist goes to New York. And did you know that the game Welcome to the Dungeon is actually called Dungeon of Mandom in Japan? I'm kind of upset that Yellow decided to change the name. Now I haven't played that many trick-taking games, but this one felt special for me. It's called Trick of Spy, and it combines trick-taking with deduction, which are two genres I wouldn't have guessed to work well together. The goal of Trick of Spy is to find the one card that isn't being used in the game, located here. There are three suits, and when the leader plays a certain color, the remaining players have to play the same color card. If they can't, they have to play another color, and this lets everyone else know that they don't have any more cards of that color. After every round, you gather more and more information, and during that time, you get to place one bet on which card you think is out of the game. If you bet on the exact card, you will get the most points. But you can also bet on which color and which number you think it is as well. 
the person with the most points at the end of the game will win. There's a bit more to the rules than that, but we still have one more designer to talk about. So let's get to it. By this time, it was nearing 5 p.m., and the convention was starting to wind down. Tables were starting to get cleared, and chairs were literally falling down behind me. But I was able to snag one more quick interview with Sashi from Sashi and Sashi Games. He's the guy who did Take the A Chord, and also Coffee Roaster. This is a solo game that comes in a big box, which is the only single player game that I know that does this, and also one of the few solo games that I actually like. Sashi was with his wife, who also happens to be the artist for all his games. To be honest, I wasn't a big fan of the artwork at first, but I was genuinely surprised at how much it grew on me. So I was eager to know more about their third game. This is what he had to say. あの、Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to play Wine the Film at the convention, but I did afterwards. First off, let me say that every card was individually hand-drawn by Sashi's wife, and she gave each color set a hidden theme. Try to figure them out if you can. This is a set collection game where you have to make the longest sets possible to get the most points. The rules are a bit tricky to explain without video, but I will say that it's a fun hand management game because you can't move the cards around in your hand. When you take cards from the center pool, they are placed into your hand from the right side, and the cards on your left are then played, almost as if you were going through a roll of film for your camera. Well guys, that's it. Uh, it was a very long day. I am exhausted. I did all this by myself. I tried to show you what I could. There were so many games. I wanted to be able to show you so much more, but it just wasn't going to be able to happen. But I hope you enjoyed what I was able to show you. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. And uh, with that said, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. From Tokyo, Japan, see you later. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.